are Locked On Kentucky, your daily podcast on the Kentucky Wildcats, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, what is going on, Big Blue Nation? Welcome on in to Locked On Kentucky, your daily Kentucky Wildcats podcast. I'm your host, Lance Dahl, writer for Sports Illustrated for various SEC-related things. But on this podcast, we take a dive into all things Kentucky athletics. On today's episode of Locked On Kentucky, you guessed it, we're going to be talking about Hunter Dickinson. Is he pulling the rug over everyone's eyes? Is he hoodwinking everybody? Is he going to commit now? Is he going to commit later? I don't know. All I know is that Barstool has always and will forever disappoint me. Thank you so much for making Locked On Kentucky your first listen every single day. I want to remind everybody out there that we are free and available on all platforms. If you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the show. It would mean a ton to us here at Locked On Kentucky. And if you're listening on podcast, a follow there would be big as well. So let's go ahead and get into it. Hunter Dickinson, apparently there was rumors as to whether or not he was going to announce today, uh, May 2nd, 2023, and um, there was conversation on social media about, hey, this could be legitimately happening. And then the podcast, the, he uh, frequently uh, appears on the Barstool Round Ball podcast, uh, tweeted out and said that they would have uh, an announcement uh, for... Uh, for a a new podcast episode coming out at about 4 p.m. Eastern, uh, and then they pushed it back to 4.30. It is currently, at the time of this recording, 4.40 p.m. Eastern time, May 2nd, 2023, and there is still no video up on their YouTube channel. They encouraged everyone to go to subscribe to their podcast. They went from about 1.5K to now 2,000. To uh, 2,800, 200, or 2,820, excuse me, uh, subscribers. So, uh, I tweeted this out. This is the only thing I'm going to say about the the bar stool situation with them saying t- saying to everybody, "Hey, go subscribe somewhere." Uh, I, a proponent of getting people to subscribe to your YouTube channel, have no comment uh, on this tactic. Uh, whether or not it is intentional to get subs or it is not, uh, I have no comment. So, as of right now, we're currently sitting in limbo. Is he going to announce today? I don't think so. That's why I went ahead and recorded after waiting 40 minutes for this. Uh, Is he going to announce at some point in the near future? Again, I don't know. We're going to dive into kind of what we've heard about his most recent, uh, I guess, visits and comments and thoughts. But to be honest with you, the message for today's episode is nobody knows. There are apparently three, four people that are close to him that know what's going on in this situation. Uh, I would assume it's his family. Nobody truly understands what's going on with Hunter Dickinson and where he's going to end up going. There are reports of, well, not reports. There are, well, maybe some of them are reports, but rumors and comments and reports of, well, Kansas thinks this, Kansas is offering this, Maryland thinks this, Georgetown thinks this, uh, Kentucky thinks this. You know, Coach Cal tweeted out, a, uh, a picture of him having lunch with Bill Clinton and saying, wow, it's been a really uh, big day for me so far, and it's not even 4 p.m., right, as it was announced by the Barstool podcast that they would be posting at 4 p.m., the uh, the show. And again, I want to reiterate to you, I'm just going to refresh the page here just to see if they've done it. Nope, it is currently 442, and they have still yet to post uh, an episode. I actually tweeted out whenever they said at 4.30, I'm like, what if they tweet out again and they're just pushing it back another half hour and they keep doing it over and over again today. So I am, um, I'm in a place right now where I can't really give you any extra information outside of what you're seeing on message boards. And to be completely honest with you, can we truly believe what is being said on the message boards to be true? Like, like if what we don't, nobody knows, nobody knows, not Jack Pilgrim, not Mac Jones, not anybody with KSR, not anybody with 24-7 for, ter- for for Maryland, the Terrapins. Nobody understands what's going on here. Nobody does. But I have to take you through, at least if you've not heard what has been going on. So Jack Pilgrim said uh, that apparently Kansas has thrown out $1.75 million uh, for, for Hunter Dickinson's services, said that they're talking and acting like they're going to get him. We don't know if that number's real. We don't know if that number's, you know, what they actually want to pay for him. We know that Kentucky doesn't want to get into a bidding war with anybody. Uh, Jack Pilgrim also said uh, he, uh, Oscar Shibway is making about 3.7. 
uh, NBA teams have heard the actual number was 1.9. So, uh, I mean, this the Kansas number, what Kentucky's offering, what Maryland may be offering, I think it's all in the realm of 1 million plus, I can only assume. But again, we don't know what's going on here with the money. And we also don't know if Hunter Dickinson's truly leaning towards Kansas. We also don't know if he's leaning towards Kentucky. Cal, apparently, uh, I don't know what you make of that tweet, what you will. I don't know if he thinks that Dickinson's coming. I don't know if he's at least trying to play like it is. Does Dickinson know where he's going at this point? I mean, honestly, based on the way that some of these talking heads are discussing this, it almost feels like Dickinson himself doesn't know. And some of these numbers, some of these tweets, some of these conversations that are being tossed out onto social media are to help him I guess, mentally guide him in one direction or another. Apparently, Kansas was negatively recruiting against the Wildcats as well. That's another note that we've seen on message boards. According to Maryland's 24-7, spot, uh, 24/7 website, Inside MD Sports, they believe, and I quote, the mystery is so strong that apparently a few days ago, one conversation between a pair of parties close to his con- recruitment concluded with a theory that it's Maryland or Georgetown which is wild because Georgetown has been seemingly a non-factor in his recruitment. So again, anyone saying they know he where he's going likely doesn't. So even even Maryland sports is just like, well, the most recent thing that we've seen a few days ago is that it was either Maryland or Georgetown. And to be honest with you, we don't even really believe that either. So again, we don't know. KSR also said that two national college basketball types said that they know where Dickinson's going. And one of them said Kentucky one of them said Kansas. Uh, again, it's not that it's not it's not a me thing. It's not me saying, "Oh, I don't care or this that or the other." I'm just sitting here telling you you're not going to get the information until it gets closer to whenever Dickinson is actually going to commit. And again, I started this episode because I was confident in the fact that I just don't think he's going to commit. I almost went live at 4 p.m. to just say, "Hey guys, I don't think it's going to happen today. I want to talk through what's going on and who else we should get because we're going to talk about that on today's episode as well because the reality of the situation is Kentucky is one of four, right? Kentucky's one of the four teams that are are in play for his services. We've heard nothing about Villanova, by the way, who is somebody else that is also in this race as well. We've heard nothing about them. Kentucky, I think, is in a decent spot, just a, just a pure shot in the dark. That's my guess. I think Kentucky's in a good spot. That's it. That's all I got right now. And I don't want to throw shade on somebody that may potentially be committing. It almost feels like, and somebody tweeted out this, and I kind of agree with it. It almost feels like the hype around this player is starting to dwarf what this player actually means. And I'm not sitting here telling Hunter Dickinson he's not talented. He's not valuable to a college basketball team. He's not this, that, or the other. I'm just saying... I feel like we're starting to blow, okay, where is Hunter Dickinson going? Out of proportion. And we need to kind of rein things back in a little bit as Kentucky fans because here's what I've been saying. Hunter Dickinson would be great. Is he the best fit for what Kentucky needs? I don't really know. Apparently, Kansas has been saying the same thing as well. And that doesn't make me, you know, an expert. Just I think that's something that a lot of people have been saying. Is he the best fit? I don't know. But Kentucky, regardless of what happens, I think if they get a portal kid or if they get Sheepway to come back or if they get Dickinson, if they get one of those three things to happen, they're good because they've got four or five other players that they're going to be able to consistently rely on as scoring and defensive options, I think, this season. I think you're going to see Rob Dillingham, DJ Wagner, Justin Edwards, Aaron Bradshaw. They're all going to be good. They're going to be great as long as they don't get uh, injured. Knock on wood. Right now, Kentucky doesn't need an all-world center that scores 18 points a game. They would love to have him, no doubt, but they don't need it. They, I think, in my opinion, need somebody that can protect the rim and can guard the pick and roll and can play solid defense and is taller. I know that that there have been some frustrations about the height uh, Kentucky at over the past couple of seasons with Oscar Sheebway being in the rotation. They need someone taller with more length. 
If they get Oscar Sheboy back, you know what, to be completely honest with you, while they're still going to have some of those concerns, I think the talent across the roster is going to mask that. We've talked about that recently as well. Oscar Sheboy coming back on this team may not be the best thing for him because of the fact that he may get overshadowed by some of these other players. And whenever he does get his time, if he doesn't execute, that will further lower his draft stock that is already not that high. This is a conversation that we can be having again and again and again and again until somebody makes a decision. But I just don't think that it's happening today. I'm continuing to refresh this YouTube page. It's now it's now 4.50, uh, 20 minutes past the time that they said uh, this would happen, and nothing is happening uh, right now. I'm continuing to check Twitter. Uh, I'm continuing to check the YouTube channel. Nobody said anything. And now some people are starting to get frustrated with the fact that they said 4.30, and it's 20 minutes past. So I want to talk about some of the other, other options. Uh, that Kentucky could have here. Uh, there's There are two other players that have entered the transfer portal recently uh, that I think would be interesting uh, for Kentucky to pick up. I'm going to talk about them in just a second. Before I do that, though, I want to tell you guys about our friends over at FanDuel. You need to make a fast break to FanDuel right now because it's the NBA playoffs. We've been talking about it recently on the show. A phenomenal. I mean, so good. It was so good the first round for the NBA playoffs. It was absolutely incredible. They're getting into the second round now. You need to head over to FanDuel right now because new customers get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's $1,000 back if, you're, uh, if uh, your bonus bets uh, don't first hit and your first bet doesn't win. You know, there's some great different props that you can have. On top of this, there's points, rebounds, steals, blocks, all these different things that you can do over at FanDuel. It's safe and secure. Uh, there's all these the new promotions that they're getting at every single day. There's a lot of fun things to do over at FanDuel. I love them. You should, too. You need to check them out today. There's no better place to bet all the playoff action than at America's number one sports book. Again, FanDuel.com slash locked on. You can get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. FanDuel.com slash locked on. That is FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, continuing along here on the Tuesday edition of Locked On Kentucky. Lance Dahl hanging out here with you. Going to refresh the YouTube page again. And, oh, it is now premiering. Hunter Dickinson has an announcement to a make. Uh, to make. So if I get cold taked uh, on this here, I will uh, I will just eat my words. If it just happens to be where he announces um, <laughs> while, I'm, while I'm recording this, so be it. Uh, but a lot of people said that he's not going to announce, so I am content with that. It's going to be even better if uh, if we find out here in just a minute that uh, he is going elsewhere, and it'll make these two players I'm about to talk about uh, even more important. So there are two players that have entered the transfer portal recently, actually to one of them today, one of them yesterday, uh, that I want to discuss here for a second. One of them is Connor Vanover, seven foot five, two hundred twenty seven pounds, kind of that three point shooting big man that I think. Kentucky would have a lot of fun with. This is a player that I think Kentucky should at least take a look at. He's been to three different schools, Arkansas, California, and Oral Roberts. He shot 51.7% from the field last season. That was his best mark over the course of his career. 32.4% from deep. He was an 81% foul shooter. Uh, really impressive there. Seven rebounds, an assist, 3.2 blocks, uh, 0.7 steals, only averaged one4 Personal fouls per game, oh, which is weird considering he played 25, uh, almost 26 minutes uh, for the for the Golden Eagles last season. So he's been all over the place. He's been in the SEC. During his time in the SEC, he was inconsistent. Like I think that he shot really, really badly from three uh, in his final season with the, with the Razorbacks. Uh, he also wasn't healthy. Um, yeah, he was only one of 13 during his, his, uh, his year with Arkansas. Uh, he wasn't healthy the, uh, for most of the year. And I think that because of the height, because of the fact that Kentucky doesn't need somebody that's, an, that's a world beater uh, at center, this would be somebody that would be a lot of fun to have on the team uh, alongside you going on Yenzo. Like, it would be a really, really fun time for, for Yenzo because this is somebody I think that you could flip and uh, what, what's the word? I'm like, rotate. Man, I'm an idiot. Rotate with uh, with Onyenzo. 12.7 points, uh, again, 7.2 rebounds. He is not a statistical monster. He and Onyenzo would go well together. Then you've got a player that I'm going to try and pronounce his name. And if I fail to do so, uh, I apologize. His name is Aziz Banda, uh, Bandago. Banda, Bandago. 
I believe. Okay. Don't know. I lost. I lost today. Aziz is a seven foot sophomore uh, from Utah Valley, 11 and a half points, 10.4 rebounds, 1.2 assists. He averaged almost three blocks a game. Uh, three blocks a game. Uh, I'm just going to call him Bandigo uh, because it sounds cool. So Aziz Bandigo has been there for three seasons with the Wolverines. Um, if you don't remember, Fardaz Amac, that is a name I can pronounce, uh, was, the, uh, was the center here last year for Utah Valley. And uh, he was the guy that we were taking a look at, if I'm not mistaken, uh, as a player that Kentucky could potentially pick up. He went to Texas Tech. And actually, I don't know where he is now, um, but, uh, but he's, he's, not a Utah, he's not a Utah Valley anymore. This is, again, another player that I think would be an interesting pickup because of the hype, because of the production, is not necessarily world beater. And I think that once more, probably more defensive-minded. Both these players average three blocks plus a game. Uh, defensively, I think they bring you something that you would like to have on the table. And if Connor Vanover, Vanover could say, stay healthy, I mean, he'd be a lot of fun. This kid would be a lot of fun, uh, considering that he was also a really good rebounder. Um, so something to keep an eye on here as well uh, with uh, with Aziz, uh, Bandigo, and... Uh, man, I'm completely drawing a blank today. And uh, Connor Vanover. So those are the two players I think we could potentially be looking at uh, coming to... Uh, Kentucky, or at least Kentucky drawing interest with uh, if Hunter Dickinson does not make a decision. Uh, as of right now, um, doesn't really look like he's going to be making a decision. I'm just looking, I'm just watching the intro here uh, on YouTube. If this ends up getting cold taked, I will re record this. Uh, if not, uh, we will just talk about Hunter Dickinson coming to the Wildcats. You may never see this episode. So, that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Kentucky. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked on UK. You can follow me on Twitter at Lance Dahl underscore. And you can follow the show over on Instagram. That is at Kentucky Podcast. Questions, comments, concerns, leave them in the YouTube comments. Hit me on the socials. I will see you all tomorrow for another episode of Locked on Kentucky. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day. And God bless.